right, this is the ultimate video. If you want that perfect backswing, I'm gonna first start out by saying one of the easiest ways I've found to build a great backswing, and then I have scoured the internet. I have looked at your comments. I have read your questions, and I'm gonna go through and answer every possible question that people have had in regards to the backswing, give the incorrect and correct ways to do those, give you some great drills for each of those pieces if you find yourself off track. So you're gonna to wanna to bookmark this video. This is not like a normal video that you'd seen on YouTube. This is kind of a complete guide to the backswing. So let's jump right in and go ahead and get started. Hit that subscribe button. I got tons of great videos coming out for you this year. I don't want you to miss out. And if you're not subscribed, you won't be notified when we release new videos. So be sure to hit that button now, click that thumbs up. It always helps us to grow the channel and to support the channel and post your comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Now, the first thing, when I'm looking to build a good backswing, most of the time what that means to me are a couple things. Number one, I wanna make sure that I really get loaded up I want my chest to really rotate in the backswing. I want to get that good shoulder turn. I want my hips to go ahead and rotate. That way I have the full power for my body. If I find myself without very much body rotation, I'm going to tend to pick up the club with my hands and arms, fold my left arm at the top of the swing, go all hands and arms on the downswing. I lose tons of speed and I lose a lot of consistency also. So that's the first piece. I want my full body loading up and I want to do it in a consistent way. And then the second piece is I want to go ahead and have my club working on plane throughout the swing. So if I go ahead and demonstrate a shot, let me hit a good one and then I'll talk about what exactly I feel to make those two things happen. There we go, right down the right center. Probably not gonna read super far on my flight scope today. I'll be showing you numbers throughout this entire video. We got a little bit of wind in our face, but I'll do my best to get them out there. So the first piece here, how do we build a good consistent backswing? What is the main thing I'm looking for? I wanna build my turn and my overall swing plane throughout my entire body. So you've probably heard me talk about this before, but if you can imagine, a plane of glass going from my knees, imagine my knees are through this plane of glass and it's going down to the golf ball. As I make my backswing, I want my knees to swivel and be on that plane of glass. So now my knees are kind of angled toward that golf ball. Anywhere in this zone is fine. If I go up to my hips, the same thing is happening. As I rotate in the backswing, my right leg is straightening a bit, my right hip gets higher, my left hip gets a little bit lower, and you can see my hips are on this angle kind of going to the golf ball there too. That's gonna to allow me to not only rotate back and through, but to also be consistent with my swing plane. Take it up to the shoulders. Now all of a sudden, I'm doing the exact same thing there. This club, if I put one across my shoulders, is somewhere in the zone of this golf ball as I go back. And because I've rotated my knees and my hips, now I can get really loaded up with my shoulders to get a lot of power. And then as I come through, the same thing is happening. As I let my knees rotate on through, my hips rotate on through, my right heel comes off the ground for me to be able to do this. Now I'm staying on plane there. Now we go up to the arm. So if my knees, my hips, and my shoulders are working correctly, it's a whole lot easier to get my arms working correctly. As I let my arms swing to the top of the backswing, now that arm is gonna be roughly angled down to the golf ball. And then the club slots to match up with those overall planes in the downswing. And it's gonna be pointing right at the golf ball or just slightly outside that golf ball. So that's the big key there, two things. I wanna rotate my body, that's number one. I gotta make sure I get loaded up for power. And then number two, I want my entire body working to keep me on plane. I don't want my body to be shifting and my shoulders to be level, or for me to be have a reverse pivot and my shoulders to be level or off plane. Then everything gets thrown out of whack. I gotta have from my knees all the way up to my shoulders, my arms, my club, everything working down to that golf ball, that really simplifies things. So that's the first thing I would start out with. Do a good 15, 20 reps, get familiar with what that feels like. Hit a couple shots while you're doing that. Again, on this swing, I'm gonna go ahead and hit one. You'll notice how my entire body looks like it's angled down and staying on plane from my knees all the way up to my arms, shoulders, and club. There we go, another one right down the right center of the fairway. All right, so from here, what's the next big myth that I see, or the next big problem that I see players having? The biggest one, and the one that I heard time and time again when you guys commented on this, or when you commented on this, is that you're folding your arms. So as you make that backswing, you're, essentially your chest isn't rotating and your arms are folding up. The typical solution to this, or what you'll hear a lot of 
coaches and players. And there's nothing wrong with this tip by itself, but you'll hear to really keep the arms wide, to really keep these arms stretched out away from your body. One thing I see players do when they try to keep their arms wide though, is they end up swaying off the ball. So now all of a sudden, I try to keep my arms wide, I sway over here, my body gets a huge weight shift to the right, and then as I come in my downswing, then I'm gonna sway back to the left. Not only does that make your swing extremely inconsistent, as my head starts to go to the right and then back to the left, my proprioception, my hand-eye coordination is thrown all out of whack, but also it doesn't really help you to keep your arms that straight. What really helps you to keep your arms straight is rotate your shoulders. So if I do this correctly, instead of thinking arms wide and stretch way over here, I'd end up just folding up anyways and now I'm moving around all over the place. What I'd like for you to feel like is your chest stays centered. You have a slight tilt away from the target like we talk about in the top seat golf system. That's what we call the stable fluid spine. That little angle there, that's gonna keep you behind the golf ball for some power. Now from there, I'm gonna rotate around my spine and I have to keep my shoulders turning. This is a biggest, one of the biggest keys in golf. If my hips, my knees, my legs, lock, loosen up your left foot if you have to, if you're not very flexible, but I've gotta let my shoulders make that good full turn in the backswing, and if I do that, I can get my arms coming all the way back up here. I can get that wide takeaway, keep my arms straight, and I won't have to fold them up. The real cause behind your arms folding, sorry for the mower there for a second, I'll try to, hopefully you won't hear that too bad on the mic, but the real reason for your arms folding is that when my shoulders stop, if these shoulders stop rotating, I can only get my arms back to here. I can't get any power from there. The only way to keep my arms keeping on going if I don't move my shoulders is to fold them and get the club going farther back. So if you're bending your arms, it's actually a lack of rotation and not a lack of being wide off the ball. So on this one, I'm gonna really concentrate on my shoulder turn to keep my arms wide, to keep my arms from folding up, and you'll see that I, I create a lot of width and I don't fold up my arms when I do this. There we go, overcompensated a little bit. I was trying to stay away from the right side of the fairway, I got to the left side of the fairway. All right, so the next piece, one of the questions I hear all the time is, what do I do when I'm uncomfortable? If I'm trying to make these swing changes, maybe I'm used to folding my arms, I do that all the time. How do I get comfortable doing this? Well, there's a couple things happening here. There's a progression of drills that need to happen if you want to get comfortable on the course. Number one, you want to get comfortable making these slow motion practice swings and pausing. If I can't make a swing where I go really slow in my living room and I get this big shoulder turn and my arms stay wide and they don't break down without hitting a golf ball, just doing a practice swing, then I'm not going to be able to put a golf ball down there and do it correctly. So you have to do that first level, which is slow motion practice swings, pausing, hitting the right positions, getting an overall awareness of what this feels like. Once your body starts to feel that, you build a little bit of muscle memory. You get a little bit of awareness. You start to lay down some new neural pathways would be more accurate way of talking about this. And you just get more comfortable doing that. Once you get comfortable with that, then you get comfortable taking the next step up, which would be swinging without pausing, more practice swings, fuller speed practice swings. Once you get comfortable with that, you get to go to the driving range and hit some range balls with one club over and over again, and you get comfortable there. Once you're comfortable with that, you can mix up the clubs on the driving range. You're gonna be able to go from a seven iron to a driver to a pitching wedge, and it's gonna to hold together when you're not under the stress of the course. Once you're comfortable with that, you can take it to the course, and once you're comfortable with that, then you can take it to a competition. When I see players that really get frustrated and they say, oh man, I'm uncomfortable making these swing changes, they're trying to go straight from one swing on the driving range to a tournament and have it hold up on the weekend right from there. You have to build up those levels. And the reason for that is, as you add levels, you get more and more distractions. You go from the comfort of your living room to out where there's other players watching you. You go from there to the course where there's players watching you and you're actually playing against somebody for a tournament, a club championship, or maybe a skins game, or just a local Nassau, something like that. So you have to build up those levels. If you can do that, you're gonna fly through these progressions and things are gonna get comfortable a lot faster. If you try to, the real danger with this is if I try to go from level one right to the course in a tournament, I'm gonna fall apart and instead of keeping on working on the right things and making those comfortable, what's gonna happen is you're gonna go searching for the next greatest tip and you're gonna be right back from square one again. It's gonna fail again because we're gonna to try to go to step five and we're gonna be back searching again. And we, we were on the right track, we just had to stick with it. That's a big key, I can't reiterate that one enough. So the next piece here, wrist set. A lot of times I'll hear about players wanting to set their wrist early in the backswing. And typically, 
This is one of my least favorite drills because what happens is if I set my wrist early, a lot of times you'll see players wanting to, coaches telling you to get the wrist set here, then I hold this angle of my wrist all the way back, all the way down, and I have this great angle of lag and I release it. We've all tried it out. If it worked and that was the right way to do it, then you would try it out the first time or you would try it out a few times, get a little bit comfortable with it, and all of a sudden you'd have tons of lag. We all know that that doesn't actually work if we tried it this way. The reason is when you set your wrist early, you're stretching out the muscles of your forearm and they immediately wanna fire. So what ends up happening is if I set the wrist early, number one, I don't get that good turn. In order to set this wrist early, I have to turn off my body and just use my wrist to set the club. Now my hips and my shoulders aren't rotating. I'm losing tons of distance from there. Number two, my wrist naturally wanna cast. So as soon as I start down, I'm gonna start casting that club. I'm gonna do my best to try to do this. I have a real hard time casting it but I'm gonna to try to do that early wrist set cast, the natural reaction that I feel. You'll notice my body doesn't turn. I'm gonna lose a ton of distance doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and just warn you of that one. Oh, I about hit a house over there on the left. Not good. I don't know if I wanna do that one again. That's one of the reasons that you can't play good golf if you're casting the club. It's really tough. I was trying to hit it on the fairway. I hit my neighbor over here you know, 40, 50 yards off the tee right into their backyard. So you definitely don't want to do that. It was basically impossible for me to keep the club face square swinging that way. And I think you guys will experience the same thing. Now, if I grab another ball, let's talk about the right way to do this, which would be a later wrist set. Whenever you're taking that club back, I'm going to feel like my wrists are angled down this way. That's what's called owner deviation. And when I do that, what, I, what you'll notice is if I keep my wrist angle down, the only way to get this club moving back, because I'm not using my wrist now, is to move my body. Bigger shoulder turn, bigger hip turn, bigger knee turn. Now I can load up, I'm gonna get a lot more club head speed, and I also get a lot wider. As I rotate my body, like we talked about earlier, that makes it easier to keep the arms straighter. So that later wrist set helps you get more power from rotation, helps you keep your arms straighter in the backswing. And the third benefit of this is as I don't stretch out my forearms, the bottom of my forearms yet. As I build lag in the downswing, late in the swing, I'm stretching my forearms late, and then I'm releasing that late, and I get that whipping action. If I set the wrist early, I'm holding on, I'm not gonna get the speed. If I set the wrist late, I get that good stretch and I can immediately let it go, like you're kind of cracking a whip. You're really getting a lot of speed from that. Let's try one out now, getting that late wrist set and a good golf swing. There we go, right down the right center of the fairway again. I'll take that one. I think I'm three for four on fairways and one in the backyard of the person beside me. So let's try out. The next thing, a question that I get a lot of times is, does this work for every club? So if I'm making these backswing, do I wanna set the wrist at the same time with a pitching wedge as I do with the driver? Do I wanna have my swing plane working the same? In general, this is the same idea. The only difference is when I'm setting up with a pitching wedge, I am closer to the ball and I'm on a steeper angle. So typically the swing is gonna be more vertical and shorter because I'm closer to the ball. As I go to the driver, now I'm farther away. Again, these angles, these planes of glass, if you wanna visualize it that way, are flatter and I'm a little longer and more around. If I'm looking from face on, I feel like I'm doing the exact same thing. This long driver has a lot of momentum. As I go into the backswing, that really lets the club go farther back. Shorter pitching wedge has less momentum. So when I feel like I'm doing the same thing, my swing ends up being a little bit shorter. My shoulders are still turning, my arms are still going back. The club just doesn't set as far back. Maybe the club stops here rather than going there. If you wanna swing a little bit longer with the pitching wedge, I'm completely fine with that. I don't think length of backswing is all that big of a deal. If you want a perfect backswing, I think you can do that with a shorter swing or with a longer swing. There's been major champions, many major champions that have done it with both types. So that's the, uh, does it work with all clubs? It does. Any differences you see in the clubs are mostly just feeling like you're doing the same thing and because of the way the club is designed, it's actually happening slightly different, but it's not a conscious thing you're worrying about. The next thing, cupped wrist, this is a big one. A lot of times people will do what I call this motion, which is an inside. So the club comes inside here. You notice my wrist is flat. So they think in their mind, 
and, and what people tell you is to keep your wrist flat the whole time. You immediately try to flatten your wrist. That brings the club inside. So my club starts to do this. Look how my wrist is flat. And then that angles my swing plane this way. That angles my swing plane out to the right. So what ends up happening, I flatten my wrist and bring the club inside. And then from there, as my club comes back, my wrist cups as that club hinges at the top of the swing. And that gets me across the line with a cupped wrist. Now, in general, that's not exactly the best way to do that. If I start to do that motion, then what's gonna happen is my body naturally realizes I gotta straighten this thing back out. Your face is open because my rip, wrist is cupped. So whenever I cut my wrist, that opens the face. So my face is open and then I reroute it over the top. And now all of a sudden I have an over the top with a face wide open. So when you're trying to keep the wrist, if you're struggling having this cupped wrist at the top, a little across the line, I don't want you to feel like you flatten that wrist out in the takeaway. I think that's only gonna make things worse. What I would focus on is in the takeaway, be nice and wide, like we talked about, and you actually want a little bit of a cup here. If you really are struggling with this, think about keeping the club head a little bit outside your hands. So if I pause when my club is parallel with the ground, I have a little cup in my left wrist and my club is pointing out this way. The reason that's good is because now that's gonna put me on a more laid off position at the top and my wrist is gonna to wanna to bow. So if I go inside, I wanna go across the line and cup. If I keep that club a little bit outside and cupped early, it wants to go a little more laid off and bowed. So you'll notice that in this swing, I don't suck that club way back inside. Not to say that you can't play great golf doing that, but the players that do well taking that club back inside, they make sure they keep that club laid off at the top, which isn't, it's a little counterintuitive. And then from there, they, they come down like a JB Holmes. If you're struggling getting that cupped and across the line, here's what I'd recommend doing. Keep the club head a little outside your hands. It's gonna get you laid off in a better position at the top. And that would look something like this. There we go, right down the left center fairway. Hit that one pretty solid. So that's how to keep the wrist a little bit flatter. Again, a little bit counterintuitive. Now, the next thing that I hear all the time, and this one kind of drives me nuts, to be honest with you, because I know it's hurting so many players' games from a false idea that we want to be short. And if we stay a more short, compact swing, we're going to be more consistent. I have found this not to be the case. And I've found that the best players tend to have longer, more free-flowing swings for a couple reasons. Not to say you can't swing short. I'll actually tell you the right way. If you do want to shorten your swing, I'll give you the right way to do that here later in this video. But what I found players do, and the most common tip out there to keep a short swing, is to keep the hands lower. And when you lower the hands, I'm going to keep my hands lower here. Notice how my shoulders don't rotate as much. When I don't rotate my shoulders, I don't have as much time to build up swing speed. I'm kind of essentially making a little half back swing. When I do that, my hands are lower, my, sh my shoulders haven't turned. Now, I have to be twice as good of my timing because I have to go from here, where my hands are at the top of the swing, to contact this very short period of time, short period of distance. I have to accelerate really fast. What I typically find players doing is their hands get tight, they always feel rushed, and because they're accelerating so fast, they've lost the feel of the club head and it gets very tight and heavy in their hands and they actually lose some consistencies for, for contact. Let me go ahead and swing one here. Let me make sure my flight scope's on. Flight scope X3, I use that one a lot. This is an awesome machine. I've only had this for about a month now, but I love this thing. Short back swing, lower hands, kind of the common tip that's out there. And let me go ahead and, and make a swing, see where this goes. So for me, I feel really rushed on that one. My, that was the worst contact that I've had on a normal swing all day, low and off the heel. And that ball went into the left rough, had a little bit of a fade on it. I got 104 miles an hour of swing speed. Swing speed's way down. 204 carry, 234 total distance. That is way lower than I normally get. I'm usually around 300 yards, somewhere around in there. So that short swing, because it shortened my shoulder turn, then I felt rushed, I felt tight, and it killed my club head speed. Let me go ahead and do one the correct way again, where I would feel like I get a lot of shoulder turn. I wanna feel like my hands go as far back as they can 
as long as they can stay nice and wide and straight. I don't want them to fold up like this, but I'm gonna keep them fairly wide and go as far as I can. So if you're a little bit tight, just go as far as you can, that's completely fine. This is something I can't reiterate enough. If you're tight and you're not very flexible, make sure you loosen up this left knee. I don't want this left knee to be stiff and look like this at the top of the backswing. I'm gonna let that come on out toward the golf ball. I'm gonna let that left heel come a little off the ground. That's gonna loosen my hips. That's gonna loosen my shoulders and I'm gonna get a bigger turn and more club head speed. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. That was a miss hit there. Didn't really hit that one that good. Right down the middle of the fairway, I can't really complain too much. So I went from 104 club head speed. I'm guessing that's probably 115, 115, 117. Again, a miss hit, 270. Heck of a lot better than 234. So you can see how that adds the distance. Now, if we do want a shorter swing, let's say you're just dead set and you say, okay, I'm just a believer that the swing should be short and you can't convince me <laughs> anyway, Clay, I'm not buying it that the swing can be long. If you're going to make a shorter backswing, don't concentrate on the hands being shorter. What I would concentrate on is the shoulders making a big turn and the club just not setting very much. So I'm rotating my shoulders, my legs, hips, everything's getting a big turn. My hands are getting a big turn and I'm just not taking the club as far back. So I'm not letting the club drop down I'm keeping a little bit up here. That's what you see guys like John Rahm, JB Holmes, those shorter swing, play, swing players. They still have a big shoulder turn. Look at their shoulders next time. They're getting to 90 degrees. That's allowing them to generate speed from the body and to get this big hand path. Their hands go fairly high in the backswing. They're just not setting the club. If I do one like that, I'm gonna try, that's not my natural swing, but I'm gonna try to make a big shoulder turn with a shorter swing and see what happens. So there, a little bit off, a little spinny for me. Again, into the wind, it's not gonna go that far, but I still had power because I rotated my shoulders. If you're gonna make a shorter swing, that's the way to do it. Right down the middle, 118.5. I actually picked up a little swing speed because I tried to really be aggressive there. Completely fine if you're gonna do that. Uh, two, again, about 270 into the wind. Not too bad, I'll take that for today. Now the last thing here, or one of the last things is the reverse pivot. A lot of players struggle with this reverse pivot. Let me go ahead and grab a T. I'm losing all my T's here. So the reverse pivot, what I see players doing when they have that is the most common misconception I see is to have a, a reverse K. So the reverse pivot is this. I set up to this golf ball, my hips slide to the right in the backswing and my upper body leans to the left. So that's your reverse pivot. This can be disastrous to your, to your backswing and your golf game because as I do this reverse pivot, I'm gonna have to change from here. I know I can't hit from here, I won't be able to hit the ball at all. So what happens is the hips bump back forward and the upper body starts to drop back, but all this momentum of your upper body falling back, now all of a sudden you start chunking behind the golf ball. So a common miss hit I'll see with the reverse pivot is this lean to the left and then fall crash into the right. Looks something like this. And now it's a big slice, hit it all over the place. Really, really tough to get consistent contact when that's happening. The common advice for this is your reverse K, which sounds a little complicated, but it's actually fairly easy, very, fairly simple. And what that means is instead of my hips going out in this, kind of like a K, so you imagine my upper body if this is a straight up and down line, my upper body's going this way, my lower body's going that way, kind of makes a K shape. A reverse K would be my hips bumping this way and my upper body doing this. So now if you imagine a wall here, that kind of makes like a reverse K kind of shape. The problem is when I see players that sway their hips a lot, they tend to do that and have a hard time breaking that habit. So if you have that reverse pivot, then what you're gonna typically do is when you try to get that reverse K is you're gonna not only keep your body to the right, but you're still gonna sway. And a lot of times you're just gonna shift way over here to the right and you're gonna start moving around a lot. So you went from a lot of movement, leaning left and then crashing to the right to a lot of movement away from the ball and then sliding this way. Both of those are gonna cause a lot of trouble for you. What I'd like for you to do is still keep that reverse K idea. Keep the idea that as I turn, your body's gonna flex away from the target. But when you do this, don't keep as much weight on your right side. Normally a reverse pivot 
your right foot comes all the way off the ground on the inside. I want you to feel like the inside of your right foot is kind of planted in. You have a little bit more weight on the inside of your left foot as you turn away from the target. Now for you, that's gonna be the right feeling and that's gonna keep you in the right position. I would take it even a little bit simpler than that and just put the club across your shoulders like we did in the beginning of the video. Let's, let's keep it as simple as possible. Let's try the easiest solution first. Hinge forward. What you'll find if you do a reverse pivot is now all of a sudden my club's pointing way too level with the ground. It's pointing out there. If I start to do this and point my club toward the ground and I have a little bit of weight on the inside of my right foot, you'll notice I'm in a great position here. As I rotate through the shot, I'm in a great position there too. So try that drill first rather than doing the reverse K and trying to mess with all that. Just get your swing planes working correct. I think that makes things a lot easier. Let's give one more a whirl here. See if I can get one down the middle to end on. There we go. I'll take that one right down the center of the fairway. Those tips will help you to build a perfect backswing, a great looking backswing. But remember, start with the simplest piece first. Your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your arms, everything rotating toward that golf ball. That's really gonna simplify the golf swing. All right, now I don't want you to stop here. One thing that we hit on throughout this entire video, and I think is one of the most important parts of the swing is the power turn. And that's when we let our hips, our shoulders, and our body rotate in the backswing and in the follow through. That's gonna build the overall power from your legs all the way up to your shoulders. That's the momentum that we get in the golf swing then our hands and arms can build on that. That's what's gonna keep you on plane. That's what's gonna build the base to your swing. If we can get that right, everything else just starts to line up. Again, that's what I call the power turn in the top speed golf system. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my best power turn videos. All you need to do is click the link or the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. Once you knock this out, you'll be amazed at how much more of a powerful player you are, even if you're not very flexible at all. Let's go ahead and get started. With the correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's going to allow us to have a lot of power. So. We don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn. If not more than that, I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now, here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.